Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, here we all are, gathered to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Today's gospel begins in the wilderness. And I think it's remarkable to pause and consider just how often things happen in the Bible in the wilderness. Moses and the burning bush. The wandering of the Jewish people for 40 years before coming to the promised land. The ministry of John the Baptist, preaching and baptising. So I think it's remarkable how often things happen away from all of this, away from the hustle and bustle of cities, of marketplaces, trade and commerce, away from work, away from worldly concerns. And today's gospel tells us how, in the wilderness, in a farming region, shepherds were the first to be told of the birth of our Lord. And I think it's worth pausing just for a second to picture that moment. Shepherds were itinerant. They walked from uh, place to place with the flock. They didn't own their flocks. They looked after them for someone else. And I don't think they were the favourite people of, of many, many that were out there in the community. They were a little bit outcast, but a little bit on the edge. And yet there they were. And to them, to them of all people, an angel appeared. The good news came to those who needed it most. And the shepherds, they react with fear. And I think all of us can understand that. I, I think if I was in my backyard minding my own business and suddenly if someone appeared growing, glowing with a bright light, I might be a little bit worried. And yet they're reassured and they're given this astonishing message. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. So the angel is bringing them good news, gospel. A king has been born, a king in the line of David, their saviour. And yet, their Lord hasn't been born to a rich and powerful family. He has been born to the family of Mary and Joseph, and he rests his head in a manger, in a feeding trough for animals. It's really not what you'd expect. It might be difficult to believe. And then suddenly, there in the wilderness, there appears a heavenly host, angels arrayed in great number, singing, glory to God in the highest heaven, on an earth, peace among those whom he favours. I think it's just amazing to picture that. It's an event that must have moved those shepherds to tears. It's an event which must have lit up the sky. And today's gospel tells us that those shepherds believe, they act, they bear witness. Indeed, they tell the Blessed Mary what has been declared to them. And I think we find great wisdom in her response. Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. As Christians, we've, we've got a lot of words to treasure. We have the rich and, uh, and deep tradition we find in the Hebrew Scriptures. We have the words of the New Testament. We have the words of people of our faith over 2,000 years, generation after generation after generation. Generations of Christians who have prayed and struggled and sought the guidance of God so as to follow in the way of our Lord. Over Advent, over the last few Sundays, Chris has talked to us a lot about incarnational theology. The birth of Jesus, his entry into the world, fully human and fully divine. A birth which we celebrate today gathered together. A birth which represents a dramatic change in the world, an intervention in the world. God reaching out to us. God reaching out to us in love. Reaching out to us by sending his only begotten son. As the letter to Titus tells us, that when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. 
rebirth and renewal. As we together, as all of us, each of us, walk in the path of discipleship, as we follow the Lord, I believe that that's something that's continual, something which happens, something which we experience over and over again. Rebirth and renewal, death and resurrection. Rowan Williams, um, who, is a great, who is a great former Archbishop of Canterbury, has said that at the time of Christmas, we are called to see ourselves honestly and to see the world differently. And yet, sometimes I find myself having a bit of trouble at Christmas time, and I doubt I'm the only person here. There's just so much to do. There's so many things to worry about, so many things going on. It's hard to find peace. It's hard to find a time of quiet. There's so many distractions. It can be hard to treasure the words of God. It can be hard to ponder those words in our hearts. I remember being a small child in England, snow falling, mesmerising baubles on the Christmas tree. For some of the kids here, maybe this will ring true. Those shiny and quite hot little lights on the tree that you're not supposed to touch, yet I definitely did when my parents weren't watching. <laughs> Don't do that. And yet that faint childhood memory set up unreasonable expectations for the Christmases of my future life. And I think it's only in the last few years that I've come to realise that it's not about the presents, it's not about the turkey, it's not about the tofurkey, or the prawns, or the cauliflower with cheese, as wonderful as all of those things are. Instead, I think Christmas is a time to follow Mary's example. It's a time to treasure. It's a time to ponder. A time to remember that we celebrate not just the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago, a wondrous but maybe a little bit distant event, but that we also celebrate the presence of Christ with us, Christ with us here and now, right now, in each of us. God is with us. God reaches out to us with his love. Christmas is a time to anticipate the coming kingdom of God, a kingdom of peace and harmony, a kingdom without war, a kingdom without strife, a kingdom which approaches, a kingdom which intrudes, sometimes unexpectedly, into the here and now, a kingdom that I think we sometimes get a glimpse of when we start to look at the world in a different way. And I think that's why the Feast of Christmas is so important, so vital, even if the year preceding it has been difficult. Perhaps especially if the year has been difficult. If we grieve for family or for friends who have passed on. If we have been unwell, or our friends and family have been unwell. Or if we've faced other trying and difficult concerns. Archbishop Oscar Romero, the 20th century saint and martyr from El Salvador, offered this reflection upon the time of year that we're in. Advent should admonish us to discover, in each brother or sister that we greet, in each friend whose hand we shake, in each beggar who asks us for bread, in each worker who wants to use the right to join a union, in each peasant who looks for work in the coffee groves, the face of Christ, then it would not be possible to rob them, to cheat them, to deny them their rights. They are Christ, and whatever that is done to them, Christ will take as done to himself. That is what Advent is, Christ living among us. Christ among us. It's just, um, it's just um, moving, isn't it, if we pause and think about that? Christ here among us. Later in this service, as we offer each other the peace, I think maybe it'd be nice to remember the words of Saint Romero. As we look into each other's eyes, let us look to see a glimpse of Christ. And later, when we leave this place, let us each of us remember to look in the eyes of those strangers whom we meet and also expect to see Christ. As we walk in the way of our Lord, we are called to change. We are called, as the letter to Titus reminded us, to devote ourselves to good works. We are called into deeper relationship to our God and with each other, and not just with those here today, 
in this church, but with all of humankind. We are called to build up the kingdom of God. So let us treasure the words of the gospel and ponder them in our hearts. For hallelujah, Christ is born. The Lord be with you. And also with you.